Hey, what's up subscribers? I hope you're having a great day. And today I'm gonna to talk about traverses because they come up a lot, even in our everyday lives. And it's gonna be great to know this stuff for the exam. I think a good portion of the exam was traverses. I can't exactly remember, but um, there's four different topics that we're gonna to get into today. So that's basically northing, easting, resolution, how do we go from point A to point B? Um, azimuth angles and how you can use the calculator to save some quick time. And then uh, the distance between two northing and easting points. And we can basically get this uh, from just knowing the X and Y coordinates or really the northing and easting coordinates in other words. One quick thing that I want to point out is what is the difference between a northing and an easting and then the XY coordinates. Well, the northing and easting is in relation to a map and it's definitely a more globalized and standardized coordinate system than the XY system that we're kind of used to seeing in typical math problems. And the advantage for using a northing easting is that it's relative to the global positioning system of the Earth, and so we're just used to defining a magnetic north to orient ourselves on the map. And so that just gives somebody in China the same kind of eastern direction as somebody in the United States because it's basically going in one direction across the globe. And as far as we know, that we can align our coordinate systems together using a northing and easting system. So I think that's the advantages and why in surveying we definitely want to see a northing and easting versus an XY coordinate. If you look at uh, property deeds and properties, they're definitely defining the boundary lines for houses and plots of lands in terms of northing and eastings because this uh, orients it across the map and we can definitely give a bearing in terms of northing and easting and, and an azimuth angle. So that's kind of why we want to define these traverses in terms of northing and easting versus just X and Y. Okay, so let's look at this traverse problem and basically we start at point A and the northing is 100 feet the easting is 100 feet, so that's kind of the starting point of this traverse. And also for traverses, you want to keep in mind that all of the points A, B, C, and D should be in the uh, quadrant number 2. And so point D should not be in quadrant number 4 or quadrant number 1, or A should not be in quadrant number 1. Uh, this is because you want everything in the same quadrant so that when you go to do your distance equations that the signs don't get screwed up or the azimuth angles don't get screwed up. So generally you do want to keep points A, B, C, and D in the same kind of quadrant. And this is just if you're aligning your northing and easting and trying to make it simpler and putting it into an XY Cartesian system. But um, for this problem, we're just going to assume that everything's in the same quadrant. So if we look at this point A, uh, the northing, easting, 100 feet each. And so the distance between points A and point B is 60 feet. And in the top right, we can see these equations. And they say uh, the azimuth angle can be written in terms of the arc tangent of delta E, the change in the easting, over delta N, the change in the northing. And this is similar to what you've normally seen in math, was just uh, change in delta X over uh, delta Y. And then also the distance between the two points is the square root of del delta N squared plus delta E squared. So in terms of writing this, we can see that we're given degrees. There's 22 degrees down there, uh, 60 feet up here, and then 50 degrees on point B, and, and 110 degrees on point C. 
The north and east of A is 100 feet and 100 feet respectively. Find the length of X. So what we want to do is go from point A all the way down to point D because we actually don't know what the length of uh, X is right here. And so what we want to do is looking at these four equations and we know that we can find the distance between two points using the changing in the northing and the changing in the easting. And so what we aim to do is find the northing and easting of D. So what does that mean? Well, we're given the distances between points A and B and points B and C and point C and D. So we're going to try to find the distance in between all of them. And we're going to use these equations right here. And we're going to solve for the coordinates of point D. Basically find the northing and easting. Pause the video right here and see if you can come up with the correct answer. And then uh, once you find your answer, uh, let me know what you got. And comment below if you think this exercise was helpful. Or, or comment saying you already kind of know this material. Solution right here. The objective was to get the northing and easting of point D and we're going to go segment by segment. So segment AB, we have a distance of 60 feet and then if we look at the azimuth angle right here, um, the azimuth angle is basically we pretend to draw a vertical for point A straight up and then so we can see that that angle of point A is uh, 90 90 degrees and so we know the azimuth angle of AB is just 90 minus 22 and that should be apparent so we know the azimuth angle and basically if we look at this chart we put in the azimuth angle right here of 68 and then AZI D1 XY and that stands for azimuth angle to XY uh, translation. By the way, if you want to download all the equations, they're available on my website, uh, passcivilpe.com, and you can follow along there. And so the segment uh, of the azimuth angle we saw for by just looking at it, and then once we have the azimuth angle, we can figure out the delta N and the delta E for the next for the next uh, coordinate here. So what we found was that the northing and easting of point B was 122.47 and 155.63, and we have an azimuth angle of uh, 68 and then a distance of 60. And so basically how we go from point A to point B is we use a distance and we use an azimuth angle and then we get the translation uh, from point A to point B. It's basically a bearing, kind of like a vector almost. And, and then what we get for point B is uh, north thing 122.47 and then east thing 155.63. And then so we can use that information and we can go to the next coordinate here, point C, because we know the distance is the same as the last time, 60 feet. But now the azimuth angle is changing. So we're going to see that it will be a uh, 90 degree angle here and then plus 50. So in that sense, we're going to get a azimuth angle of 140 and then so from azimuth angle of 140 and a distance of 60 we go ahead and, and we use our calculator and we we're going to use the equation az1 azi d1 xy which basically means azimuth and then distance and then the one is kind of a separator and then we're going to go into xy coordinates or in this case northing and easting um, I don't, it's really northing and easting, but I just chose X, Y just because it made sense in my head. Uh, but anyways, we're going to get point C 
a northing of 161.04 and then an easting of 109.667 and so now we have the northing and easting of point C and so you kind of get what we're doing from each point to point now we have the coordinates of point C and now we want to go to coordinates of point D and so uh, we know we know the azimuth angle of C will be uh, 90 plus 110 and then so that's going to give us an azimuth angle of 200 and then a distance of 60 and so the northing and easting of point D will be 140.54 and the easting will be 53.2854 and then from there we can run the distance equation and then the distance equation is just the square root of the northing squared plus the uh, easting squared and that'll give us that'll give us a final distance of 61.85 so basically that'll be the square root of 140.52 minus 100 squared plus 53.285 minus 100 and squared that and then the square root of the whole thing equal to 61.85 so there you have it. Um, I hope that example was useful and went through kind of all the tricks that they kind of throw at you and how you want to resolve each angle using the azimuth angle every time because if we use a different angle than the azimuth angle, uh, you definitely could get confused. Um, so like and subscribe if you think that was helpful and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Who doesn't like free content? Please like and subscribe. Tell me how I could do better. Leave a comment wishing which topics you would like to be covered next. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Passive PE.